Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, June 25th, 2023, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Wow, July is just around the corner. Time is flying, but it's been a beautiful spring and summer so far. Hope you had a good week. Glad you're with us. Thank you for tuning in. Let's take a moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, while storms rage around us in the world, keep us steadfast in our faith and give us the strength to carry on, making your loving promises known to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'm going to read you a couple of scriptures today. The first one is from uh, the first reading from Jeremiah. We'll, we'll be talking mostly about that. So um, here we go. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 11 and 13. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For you have let me announce only injustice and death. Your message has brought me nothing but insults and trouble. The word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. Sometimes I tell myself not to think about you, Lord, or even mention your name. But your message burns in my heart and bones, and I cannot keep silent. For I hear many whispering, everyone is afraid. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But you, O Lord, are a mighty soldier standing by my side. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he rescues the oppressed from the wicked. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now the gospel reading is from, let's see, according to St. Matthew in the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Students are not better than their teacher, and slaves are not better than their master. It is enough for students to be like their teacher and for slaves to be like their master. If the people call the head of the family Satan, what will they say about the rest of the family? Don't be afraid of anyone. Everything is hidden will be found out and every secret will be known. Whatever I say to you in the dark, you must tell in the light. And you must announce from the housetops whatever I have whispered to you. Don't be afraid of people. They can kill you, but they cannot harm your soul. Instead, you should fear God, who can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for only a penny? But your father knows when any one of them falls to the ground. Even the hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more than many sparrows. If you tell others you belong to me, I will tell my Father in heaven you are my followers. But if you reject me, I will tell my Father in heaven you don't belong to me. Don't think I came to bring peace to the earth. I came to bring trouble, not peace. I came to turn sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, and daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. Your worst enemies will be in your own family. If you love your father or mother, or even your sons and daughters more than me, you are not fit to be my disciples. And unless you are willing to take up your cross and follow me, you are not fit to be my disciples. If you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you give it up for me, you will surely find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, now I know I started last week's sermon by saying that I had never doubted my call to ministry. Um, but today we have this reading, this gospel, which is really hard, and this reading from Jeremiah. And he is genuinely struggling with his call. 
He was simply trying to do the right thing, trying to say what he felt the Lord had led him to say. And he had become a laughingstock. He says, everyone mocks me. And he was getting tired. You know, he says, your message has brought me nothing but insults and trouble. It's hard work. He's lamenting. Jeremiah is out on a limb. He's not sure if he can or if he wants to keep taking the risk. No one's even listening. Is he then a complete failure because no one's listening? Is that really what he's supposed to be doing? I mean, it looks like Jeremiah is having a true existential crisis. And now, I think I'd be really kidding myself if I thought I never had a Jeremiah moment. You know, have you? I mean, have you ever been in that position, like not being sure if you can go on? Not sure if you want to go on, not wanting to be a failure. You know, um, look, all of us want to be accepted and respected. Jeremiah wanted to be respected. He was trying to do God's work. But, you know, there is tremendous peer pressure, cultural pressure, political pressure, social pressure. Whatever it was for him, whatever it is or was or will be for you. When you've been out on a limb, when you've put yourself in an uncomfortable or unpopular position, when you've taken a risk, and then if you don't get any recognition or any response, or worse yet, you get rejected, it wouldn't be surprising to think that you might feel like you were in Jeremiah's shoes, wondering if it's all worth the trouble, afraid it's all simply going to fail anyway, feeling tired and exhausted and wishing you could just hide. Well, obviously you're not alone because Jeremiah clearly understood that kind of moment, that feeling that you may have gone through, that crisis that you might be in. So did the disciples, actually. They were struggling as well with all of that. I mean, they're asking themselves right now, especially after this talk that Jesus has given them, what are they getting themselves into? Are we going to be able to pull this off? I mean, are we just going to fail? Do we really want to engage in the risks they're asking? You know, because by this time in Matthew's gospel, by this time in his Jesus' ministry, there has been plenty of controversy, and people have accused Jesus of working for the devil. And, you know, so that's what I say. If they call the head of the household Satan, what are they going to call you, <laughs> right? So now he's telling the disciples, look, this is what they think about me. Your ministry isn't going to fare much better than mine at this point, right? Those are not good odds. But it's funny, isn't it, how, how people tend to think, just reflecting for a second here, you know, the thought process seems to consistently go to this. If I don't understand it, or if it makes me uncomfortable, it must be bad. And if I really don't understand it, and I'm really uncomfortable, it must be evil. <laughs> That's, you know, look, they said it about Jesus. He's working for the devil because they didn't understand. And what he said and did made everybody so uncomfortable. So the disciples are feeling the pain. Jesus is feeling the pain. Jeremiah is feeling the pain. Everybody's waiting for them to make a mistake so they can point it out and get revenge and knock them down. And then Jesus doesn't make anything easier when he tells the disciples that everything they're working for, everything they stand for, everything they're trying to do is going to automatically put them even more at odds with everyone, not just their detractors, but now even their own family and friends are liable to rise up against them because of the radical nature of the message of Jesus. Maybe our world is different now, though. I mean, maybe we won't get literally crucified, but, you know, chances are that if you make the hard choices that true faith requires, um, if you take the high road that true love requires, um, if you take the risks that true discipleship requires in order to minister to your whole community, at some point you will get silenced or rejected or mocked or simply ignored, like Jeremiah, like Noah, like the disciples, like Luther. So are you up to the challenge? I mean, there are, after all, no guarantees that anything you say or do is going to work. We've been talking about making a difference all this time, and there's no guarantee that you will. However, 
what we know from the end of this gospel story um, is that submitting ourselves to God the way Christ asks us to, it doesn't lead to limitations in death, but ultimately to freedom. Because every hair on our head is truly accounted for. Um, nothing can destroy our soul and nothing can destroy our relationship with Jesus, right? God cares about us that much. So listen to how Jeremiah finishes his moment. At the end of his venting and lamenting and ranting, he says this. He says, sometimes I tell myself not to think about you, Lord, not even mention your name, but your message burns in my heart and bones, and I can't keep silent, so I have to talk about it. What does all that tell us? Well, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will not give up or give in. It is literally a part of you. It's literally infused in you, right? When you're feeling rejected by your family, your friends, and your peers, um, that's when God loves you the most. When you feel the most alone is when God is the most present. It is precisely in the middle of your Jeremiah moment when God is listening the loudest. Because God made you, you matter. And that's what matters to God. Oh, I can feel that right in my bones. Can you? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment to share the peace of the Lord with the people sitting around you watching this morning. Um, go outside. Take a risk. Talk to a neighbor. Take an even greater risk. Make a call. Send a text to somebody you haven't talked to in a while, right? You never know what that might do, right? <laughs> Take that risk. God is with you, and God is with them. In the meantime, while you get up the courage to do that, all right, let us pray the way Jesus taught us, gathered into one by that Holy Spirit. So he taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you either right here on video or right over there in church next Sunday. God bless you all.